This is the brand new Vauxhall Astra plug-in hybrid in top grade ultimate trim. Now this car starts from 40,000 400 pounds, which makes it more expensive than its arch rival, the Volkswagen Golf GTE. But it has more electric range and it looks like this. So under the bonnet is a 1.6 litre petrol engine paired with an electric motor and that can offer up to 42 miles of electric range. That is three miles more than a Golf GTE can manage, or so they say. We'll test that in just a moment. But really what this car offers above all of its rivals, I think, is these looks. It is one of the best looking cars out there from any class and especially so in this lovely shade of yellow paint. All around the car we have features which hark back to either retro style of the 80s, you've got a front end here with sharp angular details, you've got big wheels and then you've got this two-tone finish on this model here which I think looks excellent. It really accentuates the slenderness of that roof line and then around the back you have these really sharp details and a very clean rear tailgate and overall I think people are going to be one over with this car on design alone but at almost 44k as it stands here this ultimate grade plug-in hybrid Astra is going to have to do a lot more to attract the type of buyers the car fleet owners or the long distance drivers that normally go for plug-in hybrid stuff these days so has it got more than just good looks we're going to hit the roads of Oxfordshire to find out so this plug-in hybrid Astra does actually have a lot going for it, especially when you skim through the specs list. Now, with that 1.6 litre petrol engine and with that electric motor, we have a combined 180 horsepower and more crucially, 310 newton meters of torque, which is a lot of muscle. This car has some pretty impressive figures. Now, Vauxhall claims it will do 42 miles in fully electric mode, although when I got in the car this morning, the battery was at 95% and I only saw 20 miles. So something closer to 30 feels realistic unless the weather conditions are ideal. But with that electric motor and petrol engine working in tandem, you've got a car capable of 0 to 62 miles per hour in 7.7 .7 seconds and it will do 140 miles per hour. So if you find yourself on the autobahn and you need to get somewhere quickly, well, this car in theory is going to be right up there with some pretty powerful hot hatches. Also, if you leave it in fully electric modes, it will do a claimed 88 miles. Although, as I said earlier, I didn't quite get the feeling that it will offer what's claimed in the cold weather conditions of today. No surprises there. But if you leave it in hybrid mode, it's actually a very nice thing to drive. The petrol motor and the electric motor, they work really well and really smoothly together. If you slow right down as I am now in the standard hybrid mode, there is no sense of one thing taking over from the other or interrupting the other. It's very smooth and a very nice delivery of power. It helps that we have an eight-speed automatic gearbox which of course means you've got more cogs to play with and so it means that the shift can be much smoother and everything just feels so cohesive as a result. Now, if I click it down into electric mode, you get three main modes in this car. You've got a hybrid, a sport mode, and then electric. Well, the petrol engine switches off and actually it feels perfectly fine actually for most driving. I was driving out of London this morning in commuter traffic and there was a surplus of torque, surplus of power with just the electric motor. I never felt like I needed any more punch and certainly the petrol engine didn't turn on. And then when I got onto the motorway and I clicked it back into hybrid mode, then the car did feel very effortless at higher speeds and I could settle into a nice cruise. So I don't doubt any of those mile per gallon claims if you're able to mix your journey in fully electric and then petrol mode on higher speed roads. But of course, there's every chance this car will appeal to people who are looking for a bit of excitement behind the wheel, as well as those who are potentially looking to save money, for example, on company car tax. So there is a sport mode worth testing and actually handling we're now onto a quicker section of roads. If I put my foot down, this is a quick car, yeah. This gets up and moves. And it sounds pretty nice as well. It's not particularly loud, but the engine doesn't sound strained or wheezy like you get in some hybrids. It sounds quite gruff, actually. And it's got a bit of a bass to the engine, though. If I just drop it down a couple of gears. There's a definite feeling of the power being a bit lower down, but the engine then revs out quite nicely. You sense the electric motor isn't pushing the car quite as hard when the revs are high. I don't even know what revs I'm doing because the screen is so adapted for hybrid mode. It's not even bothering to tell me all those details. But it does feel like the petrol engine actually revs quite nicely up towards its red line, but the electric motor gives you the torque low down. So 
Clearly the quickest way to get around in this thing is probably to lean into that mid-range torque, but there is a bit of enjoyment to revving it out, which is a nice surprise. So what about handling? Well, I have to say that it does actually feel like the suspension setup in this car is quite firm actually on some bumps. So it suggests it might be quite sporty around the bends. And yeah, it does feel like the car is quite planted. It's moving around a little bit. There's a little bit of roll but then actually the car settles quite nicely. But I have to say it is quite fidgety over certain sections of bumps. I mean, we're on quite a tricky V-road here, but I can sense the tires just bouncing into and sometimes not quite dealing with some of the ruts and cameras on this path. But around these bends, it feels pretty eager, pretty good actually. Certainly comparable with the Golf GT, which is what it needs to be. And there is a nice sense of once the car leans into its outer wheel, there's a lot of grip. It's greasy and cold out here today, but I mean, the traction and the turning on this car, the front end is really, really sticking to the ground well. It's just that sense of firmness that I'm getting. It's quite fidgety over the bumps. All right, well, let's see how this thing feels with a launch. So if I bring the car onto this flat section here, stop it, down to zero, in sport mode, grip to the floor, and that's brilliant grip. Fantastic grip. And that's an indicated 60 now. And on the brakes. <laughs> I mean, it felt quick enough. It definitely gets up and goes, and the gearbox is quick to shift. I can't believe how much traction there is, given this is front wheel drive and it is cold and quite greasy outside, so that's very impressive. Just didn't seem to struggle with putting the torque down, down whatsoever. It is definitely entertaining to drive in some ways, um, although I'm not sure it's quite the, the hot hatch with a plug-in hybrid system I was hoping for, although I'm not particularly surprised. It just feels quick, capable, and actually pretty refined, but just a little bit fidgety. Although there's more than just this car's driving characteristics that might lure you into its cabin. And I mean that in the literal sense because this cabin is worth talking about in more detail. Now this Astra interior is a massive step up on previous Astra interiors. It now feels quite upmarket, although admittedly some of the materials are a relatively cheap feeling, but at the same time, it just looks nice and the design is actually quite unique. You've got this double screen setup up here, which is not dissimilar to the kind of stuff you get in Mercedes these days. All right, it's not on that level, but it's pretty good. Wide screen display here. You've got a wide screen for your instrument cluster as well. Loads of information on here. And I quite like the graphics. It's simple and very clear to read. The infotainment system as well is nice and quick to respond. Okay, it's a little bit fiddly through the menus. I'm still trying to figure it out, but there are some nice quirky features, including a little Astra image of the original Vauxhall Astra that pops up every now and then. So it feels quite unique. And crucially, it's got wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto to go with wireless charging as well down here in this ultimate model. And you do have USB ports, of course, as well. A couple of USB-C ones down here. And then also in here, you've got a place where you might be able to put another phone. When it comes to the kit aboard and the luxuries aboard of this interior, this thing is jam packed. You've got a heated steering wheel, heated seats, a heated windscreen as well, which is gonna be very, very useful for us Brits. And you've also got a load of features to make it easier to adjust the temperature in the cabin, namely, buttons on the dash, which you don't get, of course, in the Volkswagen Golf, where you've got those horrible fiddly controls. This one, you just click buttons on here, and that is a big plus for those of us who don't like to be distracted while driving. Elsewhere, you've got a new steering wheel ahead of you here. Now, it's this sort of compass-designed wheel. It's got a nice, thin center spoke here, and also some buttons here, which are useful buttons. There's not too many of them. On this side, you will control your driver assistance features, so you've got adaptive cruise control, you've got a speed limiter, and traditional cruise control as well. And then on this side you're controlling your media so you can move your tracks around you can even activate voice control whether you're speaking to the voxel system or like in my case whether you're talking to siri on apple carplay you can do that here you can answer calls and you can switch to three tracks and control the volume here as well so it's all nice and easy to use very comfortable elsewhere in the interior you've got quite a lot of storage space there are big cubby holes in the doors enough to put a keep cup in there as i mentioned you have your smartphone wireless charging in this ultimate car down there and there's also a bit more room for some other bits in there cup holders here they're pretty good because they can hold big or small cans and then space down here. And in here, this armrest opens up and there is a lot of storage space in here. As I said, you can get a big modern smartphone in there or I don't know, a bag of wine gums perhaps. Also, 
It's a comfortable place to sit. I actually have noticed Vauxhall interiors, typically you can sit quite low in the car. And despite this being a plug-in hybrid, because the battery's in the back, you can still have the seat nice and low in this car. So for those of us who want to enjoy the performance this particular model offers, you can get into a good low seating position with the steering wheel pulled nice and close. And yeah, maybe I'd like a bit more leg room for my legs, but only a tiny amount. Actually, really, this is a lovely place to sit. It's very comfortable. And there's a lot of space in the passenger seat as well. And I think actually, having looked at the specs sheet, it should be pretty spacious in the back as well. Now, because this car shares a platform with the Peugeot 308 and the DS4 from Sister Brands, there's actually so much space in it. There's loads and loads of knee room, and I can also tuck my feet, even with these chunky trainers on, under the seat ahead of me. And that's despite it being set as low as it will go. And when I'm sat upright, I can feel there's loads of space above me here and there's good space as well to the side. So I just feel like I'm in a really comfortable, airy cabin, and it helps that there's also a sunroof ahead of me there. It doesn't extend all the way back, but it does feel quite spacious in here. And also you get a USB-C port down here, some more storage bits down here, and you've got two vent controls here. So if you want it cold on this side and blowing and this person wants it off, they can shut that off, which is quite handy. The middle seat is, admittedly, a little bit more cramped. I mean, it's quite narrow, so my legs are kind of pushing over to the seats here. But actually, despite being higher, I'm sat upright and my hair is only just starting to graze the roof line above me. So it's pretty good, actually. So three kids in the back, you probably get away with that on the school run. But it's a classic case of a mid-sized hatchback. Basically, two adults in the back, no problems whatsoever. But whoever's in the middle has definitely drawn the short straw. And the good news is, when it comes to space, the boot is also a very, very strong offering. Now, it does lose quite a lot of room because of the batteries in the floor. In fact, it loses 70 litres of space, which, if you can't imagine what that is, just know you don't have anything down here anymore because that's where you'd have extra room. And even in this specific car, it's compromised even further because there's a whacking great subwoofer in the boot. It makes for a fantastic sound system with a lot of bass, but it does mean that all your storage space is here above the floor. Significantly, it's bigger than the Golf GTE, which, as we know, is its most comparable plug-in hybrid hatchback rival. Look, it swallows this, our family-sized suitcase with ease, room to spare, of course, and it means that this Vauxhall-supplied charge bag with your cables in here, this can sit comfortably over here as well, and then you can throw other stuff in there. So of course you're going to compromise on space because of the plug-in hybrid battery and in this case because of that subwoofer, but it's still a very respectable and class competitive size. So with a little bit more space, a little bit more in electric range, and I think a lot more when it comes to looks, this Astra plug-in hybrid is a very competitive alternative to the Golf GTE. All right, I think the Golf is just a little bit better when it comes to refinement. It definitely rides better on bumpy roads. Although I don't know right now which one is more fun to drive. I'd have to drive them back to back. This is definitely fun, but that Golf is an extremely capable machine as well. So that's one to test in the near future. But of course, when it comes to this car, what it offers in comparison, there is so much tech aboard. There's so much standard equipment you get on this ultimate model right here. And let's face it, it looks like this. It looks excellent. So do you know what? When it comes to company car buyers or those of us who need a plug-in hybrid model, I think this might just be the one that tugs at your heartstrings. But what do you think? Would you take one of these over a Golf GTE or would you take that Golf because, well, it's the default choice, isn't it? Let us know in the comments below. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to click the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We've got more sensible cars like this coming up, including the full petrol Astra and something very, very fast at Rockingham. See you soon.